All right, we're going to kick off chapter 26, which is going to discuss current and resistance and kind of uh, fully flesh out our ideas of what circuits are and what's going on in them. All right, so let's get started. So talking about electric current first, um, although an electric current is a stream of moving charges, not all moving charges constitute an electric current. If there is to be an electric current through a given surface, there must be a net flow of charge through that surface. All right, the key here is a net flow. Now, two examples are given. So, for one, the free electrons, which are conduction electrons, those are the electrons that are moving around um, in a conductor, an isolated length of copper wire are in random motion at speeds of, of the order of one, or excuse me, of 10 to the 6 meters a second, which is very fast. Now, if you pass a hypothetical plane through such a wire, conduction electrons pass through it in both directions at the rate of many billions per second. So let's just say that this is our wire, and these little electrons, as you have throughout, are going this way, they're going this way, they're going this way, they're going all over the place. Now, if you pass, um, you know, just a... a plane through here, um, you have many electrons going this direction, many going in that direction, and they're going to balance each other out. So the net the net change is going to be roughly zero. Um, now, however, if you connect the ends of the wire to a battery, you slightly bias the flow in one direction. So with uh, the result that there are now a is a net transport of charge and thus the electric current through the wire. Right? So if you have the same wire, but now you add a battery, one has a positive side, one's a negative side, you're going to influence the net flow of charge. You still have some charge going in the, in the opposite direction. It's not all going to flow um, in the direction of the current, but um, it, it, the net flow is going to be in, in, one, in one direction. Okay, the, now here's another example. The flow of water through a garden hose represents the directed flow of positive charge, which is the protons in the water molecules, at a rate of perhaps several million coulombs per second. All right, so there you have a flow of, of this charge, but there's, all, there's no net transport of charge because there's a parallel flow that's going along with the positive charge that's negative, and those are the electrons in the water molecules. Um, and it's the exact same amount moving in exactly the same direction. All right, so in this case, you have a, a hose and you have water flowing through it. You have a bunch of positive charges of the molecules, but you also have all the negative charges. So they're going together. All right, so there's no, there's no unbalance of charges, no difference. All right, so this is not going to be current. Okay, um, so to look at this a little bit closer, all right, so the top loop is going to be the loop of, of copper in electrostatic equilibrium, which means that there's no flow of charge. The entire loop is a single potential, and the electric field is zero at all points inside of the copper, right, because it's a conductor. Now, adding a battery um, imposes an electric potential difference between the ends of the loop uh, that are connected in the terminals of the battery. The battery thus pr produces an electric field within the loop from terminal to terminal, and the field causes charges to move around the loop. Uh, this movement of charge is going to be called current I. All right, now, current can be written with the little i, and I'll use a little script i like that, or it can be written as a capital I. All right, um, they're pretty much interchangeable when we're talking about current. Your textbook uses the little i in most cases. All right. Um, all right, so continuing on with electric current. Now up here, you see that there is, um, it's passing through a conductor. There's various different widths and, and angles and everything. Um, and it's going to be the same. The current's going to be the same in any cross section. So let's look at that. Um, so the figure shows a section of a conductor, part of a conducting loop in which current has been established. All right, so this is just maybe this little bit, all right, if it was a little oddly shaped. Um, now, if charge dq, which is some small incremental amount of charge, passes through a hypothetical plane such as a, a prime, so this one here, um, in time dt, so in some incremental amount of time, then the current through the plane is going to be defined as the increment of charge divided by the increment of time. 
right? So this is just a rate, right? The, the rate of the amount of charge going through it in an amount of time. Now, the charge that passes through the plane in a time interval extending from zero to t is then going to be, so if we you know, take this equation, rearrange it and solve for q, then we can take this integral from zero to t, right? And, and in many cases, i can be pulled out if i is, is, is constant, but in some cases it might not be, so that is, stays inside the integral for now. All right, so under steady state conditions, the current in the same, excuse, the, the current is the same for planes a a prime, b b prime, and c c prime. Uh, for all the planes that pass completely through the conductor, no matter what their location is or their orientation. All right, so the SI unit for current is going to be the coulomb per second, right? You can see that from this equation here, coulomb divided by second. We're going to call that an ampere. And that's uh, given by a capital A. All right, so one ampere is one A, which is one coulomb per second, right? Okay. All right, so thinking about conservation of charge and direction of current. Now, the current arrow is drawn in the direction in which positive charge carry carriers would move even though the actual charge carries which are negative the electrons are moving in the opposite direction so that's a key thing that we don't want to get confused right again the current arrow is drawn in the direction of po oops of positive charge carriers uh, would move uh, even though the actual carriers are negative right the electrons okay all right so the current into uh, the junction must equal the current out because charge must be conserved. So if so much amount of charge goes in to a junction, the same amount of charge needs to come out. All right. Um, so it doesn't really matter what the shape looks like. I mean, you can have something like this, or you can have a standard circuit where you maybe have something a little more per uh, perpendicular, or you could have something you know going back in some direction. It doesn't matter. So again, um, the relationship is going to be the current in is equal to whatever the sum of the currents are after, right? So if you have two, uh, if you have a split and it's going in two directions, when you add those two currents together, it's going to equal the original current, right? Conservation of charge. Okay. Um, current, another point we can make, currents are going to be scalars. They're not vectors, right? So they're just a, they're just a number. Okay. So let's go ahead and do an example. All right, now I know we just talked about how there actually isn't current in a hose, but we're going to do an example and uh, assume that maybe there was. If we just look at the negative charge, we can say that, well, there is a current, but not really. All right, so this example says, the water flows through a garden hose um, at a volume flow rate of dV dt uh, of 450 centimeters cubed per second. What is the current of the negative charge? So what we're doing here is we're taking some physical situation and we're trying to figure out how we convert that into thinking about what current is. Um, volume flow rate is something maybe we can measure. Current maybe not so easy. So um, we'll find out later that we, we do have tools to measure current. But let's just say we were only we, we didn't have those tools. We just were able to figure out how much volume is coming out of an object uh, like a hose. So. Anyways, um, let's look at the calculation. So we can write the current in terms of the number of molecules that pass through such a plane per second, right? So <clears throat> you say the current is, say it's the charge per electron multiplied by the electrons per molecule multiplied by molecules per second, right? Because really we end, want to end up with charge divided by a second. And these things are going to cancel out. All right, so what this looks like is we have our current is equal to our charge per electron. Well, we know that's E. That's the you know the charge of an electron is just E. Right? So that's E. Um, multiply the, the electrons per molecule. Well, we know that we're talking about water here. So there's going to be uh, 10 electrons. You have eight electrons from the oxygen, and you have two electrons from each of the hydrogens. Um, so this is going to be times 10. Uh, and then you want to multiply that by the molecules per second. Okay, and the molecules per second is just going to be dn divided by dt. It's a, it's a rate. It's the however many uh, number of molecules are going through per second. And uh, again, big N is just going to be the number of molecules. 
All right, so now we can we need to figure out what this dn dt is here at the end. Um, now we can express this rate, dn dt, in terms of the given volume flow rate, which is dv dt, first by uh, writing, writing it out. All right, so if we want to find molecules per second, that's what we're starting with. We want to get eventually get to uh, volume flow rate. Uh, we can start with molecules per mole, multiply that by the moles per mass, right? And that's going to cancel out the moles. And then mass per volume, right? That's going to cancel out the mass. And um, mass per volume. And then we end up with volume per second, right? So when you do that, this volume per second is actually what we're given. Right, these volumes cancel out, you get molecules per second. So that's what we have in the equation. All right, so what does this look like? Well, so let's see, we have our dn. Oops, this is an n. dn dt is going to be equal to um, the molecules per mole, which is Avogadro's number, right? Going back to chemistry. So we, this is just going to, I'm going to use big N little a for molecules um, per mole. And I'm going to multiply that by the moles per unit mass, which is the molarity, um, or the inverse of the molarity, right? Mass per, per mole is, is the molarity. So it's going to be 1 over big M for, mol for molarity. And that's multiplied by mass per unit volume, which is a density, mass per unit volume. All right, so this is going to be the density of the mass, and we're talking about water here. So this is just going to be the density of water, the density of H2O. All right. And then we're multiplying this by dB dt, which is what we're actually given. Okay. All right, so simplifying this, this looks like uh, the average address number times our density divided by the molarity times dB dt. Okay. Now, taking that and plugging it into our current, because again, we're, that's what we're trying to find. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So this is just going to be 10 times E. We're going back to this equation and plugging in dn dt. And uh, then we have Avogadro's number times the molarity to the negative 1 times the density of water times our volume flow rate. Okay. All right, so um, we know that Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules per mole, or 6.02 uh, times 10 to the 23rd mole to negative 1. The density of water under normal conditions is 1,000 kilograms per, per cubic meter. Um, this can be looked up on the table, or um, you might have memorized that by now. We can get the molar mass of water um, from the molar masses listed in, in one of the appendices um, in grams per mole. So we add the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16 grams per mole, uh, to the twice the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1 grams per mole. So you get 18 uh, grams per mole, or we want to get that to kilograms, right? Because all of our units need to be in the standard form. So that's 0 0.018 kilograms per mole. All right, so the current, neg the current of negative charge due to the electrons of water is then, so we just take this, plug everything in. So our current is going to be 10 times E, which is 1.6, times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, times Avogadro's number, which is 6.02, times 10 to the 23rd mole to the negative 1. Uh, times, we just found for molarity, so 0 0.018 kilograms per mole, and this is to the negative 1, times our density of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, times our volume flow rate, which is given as 450 cubic centimeters a second. We want to change that to uh, meters a second. So it's going to be 450 times 10, I think it's times 10 to the negative 6, times 10 to the negative 6 cubic meters per second. Yeah. All right, so that equals, so then our current 
is equal to 2.41 times 10 to the seventh coulombs a second, or 2.41 times 10 to the seven amperes or amps. All right, that's it for this lecture. We'll pick it up next time.